Our society has a really messed up concept of what contributing your fair share to society should look like. I struggle to find what's fair in asking one person to contribute 10% of his income while at the same time expecting another to give 40%. Most people who fall under the latter category find it deeply disturbing that they should give four times more simply because they earned more. How's that fair? Naturally, the richest of the rich have found numerous loopholes to hide their money and avoid paying taxes on them. So, here's how they do it. In all honesty, taxes are a good thing. Though no one wants to pay anything to the government, this money actually makes our communities work. They fund the schools, police, and other public services that otherwise would have to become privatized. Well, you don't need an example to know that privatizing law enforcement, the judicial system, and medical care would be disastrous. Oh, wait. We actually have that last one. Still, call me a rotten communist, but some public services have to remain, well, public. And while fair taxation is perfectly fine to keep your society running, the system that's enforced on us is essentially flawed. The taxation process as a whole has become a cruel maze. From the straightforward 1040EZ to the mind-boggling Schedule K1, the assortment of forms can leave even the most experienced taxpayer scratching their head. It's like trying to find your way through a hall of mirrors, with each turn leading to more confusion. Moreover, who doesn't like a good puzzle? The US tax system deductions provide just that. From the classic, can I deduct my pet as a dependent, to the ever controversial, are my yoga pants a legitimate business expense? Taxpayers often find themselves on an amusing quest for tax-saving treasure. Today, paying your taxes is more like a boxing match. Towards the deadline, you simply try to avoid a direct punch from the IRS due to some unforeseen mistake. There's nothing quite like that adrenaline rush as we scramble to gather our paperwork at the 11th hour. Maybe we need to add a little drama to our lives, but the IRS sure knows how to keep us on our toes. And while the rich and powerful are exempt from this stress, simply because they pay a lot of money to accountants who deal with their taxes, at the end of the day, they are the ones that have the short end of the stick. For example, if you earn over a million dollars a year, you must pay a tax of 370000 At the same time, someone who makes 15000 a year will pay only 1500 to the government. 90% of Americans will pay less than $5,000 in taxes. The top 10% on average will pay 33K, while the top 5 percenters will contribute 120K. If you're a one percenter, you've drawn the short stick when it comes to taxes. You will pay 37% of your income, which at the bare minimum will account for about 300K annually. It would be fine if your vote had more influence on what this money would be spent on. Unfortunately, as the majority rules, you have little to no say in this matter. Thus, you end up paying for absurd projects like spending $518,000 annually on studying how cocaine affects sexual behavior of Japanese quails. That's not a metaphor, this is an actual governmental expenditure. So, unsurprisingly, the rich people are not too eager to give their so-called fair share to the government. Thus, their expensive accounts have created various methods to hide away their money, both legally and illegally. Let's start with what's legal. First things first, let's make one thing clear from the very get-go. Tax avoidance and tax evasion are as different as night and day. Tax evasion is the black sheep of the family, a crime that involves deception and concealment to avoid paying taxes. On the other hand, tax avoidance is the wise elder sibling seeking to legally minimize taxes through strategic planning. And why we will certainly explore the darker path in a bit, for now, let's stick to the light side of the law. The ultra-rich know that tax planning is essential to the labyrinth of the tax code. They have a plethora of options at their disposal, and their financial advisors are skilled navigators in this intricate world. By structuring their transactions wisely, they can reap the maximum tax benefits. And who can blame them? 
So how do the ultra-rich play this game? Some of the most common strategies include deliberately under-reporting income, creating two sets of books, claiming false deductions, and shifting personal expenses to business expenses. It's a delicate dance that requires careful record-keeping and adherence to the letter of the law. But let's not forget tax avoidance isn't just about hiding income and inflating expenses, it's also about making strategic choices to minimize taxes, such as choosing the right business structure, managing the timing of income and expenses, and claiming eligible tax credits. The ultra-rich are masters of these maneuvers. They know the rules inside and out when it comes to deductions and credits. They understand that tax credits are like magic potions that reduce their tax bills dollar for dollar, while deductions depend on their tax brackets. So, they always aim for credits when available, like a wizard choosing the most potent spell for the task at hand. Another trick up their sleeve is controlling the timing of income and deductions. They skillfully defer income to the next year, when they will be in a lower tax bracket or accelerate deductions into the current year, when they're in a higher bracket. It's like conducting an orchestra, ensuring that every note plays at the perfect moment. And let's not forget about their contrarian tactics. When they know they'll be in a higher tax bracket next year or tax rates will increase, they do the opposite, accelerate income and delay deductions. It's like playing chess, anticipating the moves of the tax code and adjusting their strategy accordingly. But tax planning for the ultra-rich is not all roses and champagne. The IRS keeps a keen eye on related transactions, especially between family members and close business associates. It's like playing a poker game, where they must tread carefully to avoid suspicion of tax-shifting shenanigans. In the end, the ultra-rich are a league of their own when it comes to tax avoidance and planning. They have the means and the smarts to navigate the tax labyrinth like seasoned adventurers, finding the hidden treasures of tax savings. And while we may look upon their financial prowess with admiration or envy, we must remember that tax avoidance, when done legally and ethically, is a wise move for anyone, rich or not. Still, when the legal way doesn't work, there are always shell companies, offshore accounts, and tax havens. Finally, a tax haven must not be part of international agreements for exchanging financial information, making it harder for other governments to track money flows. These are the tax havens you'd want to do your business in. For example, Liechtenstein is well known for its low income tax. However, as part of the European Economic Area, Liechtenstein has agreed to disclose some financial information with its partners. On the other hand, Nauru, the third smallest country in the world, has no such obligations to anyone. Thus, Liechtenstein is considered a legal tax haven, while Nauru is often blacklisted as a money laundering destination. While shell companies are typically associated with the Nauru-like country tax havens, in the Liechtenstein types of tax havens, the wealthiest people most often open offshore accounts. At first glance, a shell company might seem like a legitimate business, with a fancy name and official-sounding registration. However, its true purpose often differs from what meets the eye. Unlike traditional businesses that engage in active operations, a shell company exists merely as a hollow shell, devoid of any substantial business activity. The primary function of a shell company is to serve as a vessel for financial transactions, and more importantly, to obscure the true ownership and origin of funds. With their complex web of directors, shareholders, and registered agents, shell companies act as the perfect shroud for concealing the identity of the individuals or entities behind them. For the ultra-rich looking to lower their taxes or engage in less savory financial practices, shell companies offer a playground of possibilities. One of the primary uses of shell companies is to facilitate tax evasion and money laundering, 
By funneling money through a series of these entities, the trail becomes increasingly convoluted, making it challenging for authorities to trace the funds back to their true source. Another trick up the sleeves of the wealthy involves using shell companies for asset protection. When you have substantial wealth, lawsuits and creditor threats become commonplace. But by placing assets under the name of a shell company, billionaires can create a buffer between themselves and any potential legal actions, making it more difficult for claimants to seize their prized possessions. However, the allure of shell companies lies in their potential for mischief. Tax havens around the world often host a significant number of these entities, catering to the ultra-rich who seek to exploit the grey areas of the law. One of the classic maneuvers employed by the ultra-rich is the infamous offshore tax havens. These are like secret islands where money hides from the taxman. As the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. And if you can't join them, hide your money where they can't find it. While it's true that some offshore tax havens are entirely legal, some billionaires have been known to navigate the grey areas, causing the occasional eyebrow to rise. After all, what's a little moral ambiguity when you can save a few million? Tax havens are jurisdictions or countries that offer favorable tax regulations and financial secrecy to attract individuals and businesses seeking to reduce their tax burdens. These places often have low or zero tax rates on certain types of income or transactions, making them attractive destinations for ultra-rich and multinational corporations. The allure of tax havens lies in their ability to help individuals and companies legally minimize their tax liabilities. By routing funds through these jurisdictions, taxpayers can take advantage of lenient tax laws and enjoy reduced tax rates on their earnings or investments. For a tax haven to be considered as such, it must have four main characteristics. First and foremost, the tax haven must impose little or, better yet, no tax on specific income types, such as capital gains, dividends, or corporate profits. This tax-friendly environment allows entities to retain more of their earnings. Secondly, tax havens offer a high level of financial privacy and confidentiality, making it challenging for authorities in other countries to access information about the beneficial owners of accounts or companies registered there. Thus, when the IRS comes knocking at the door, they will only find a rejection from the local government to disclose any financial information about their client. The third must for a tax haven is the lack of transparency. Many tax havens have minimal reporting requirements, meaning companies and individuals can operate with limited disclosure about their financial activities. Offshore companies, also known as International Business Companies IBCs, are legal entities established in tax havens or offshore financial centers. These companies are typically used for financial planning, asset protection, and investment purposes. They are preferred for legal tax avoidance due to their relatively inexpensive establishment and maintenance, as well as limited reporting requirements. Offshore companies usually face less rigorous reporting obligations compared to companies in other jurisdictions. This contributes to the secrecy and confidentiality they offer. As an added benefit, individuals can appoint nominee directors and shareholders to maintain an additional layer of anonymity and distance from the company. Both tax havens and offshore companies serve legitimate purposes, such as facilitating international trade, protecting assets, and enabling cross-border investments. Multinational corporations may use them to optimize their global operations and reduce tax liabilities legally. That's the beauty of it. By obscuring the true ownership of assets and income, one can easily avoid paying what the 90% call fair share. And while the international community is acting as if they're trying to make a change, with the outing of the Panama Papers, it became clear that those in power also keep their money in offshore accounts in tax havens. So if you think something's going to change soon, well, good luck. And while offshores are the latest hit amidst the ultra-rich, 
There are other ways to deal with the annoying taxes. We can't forget about the ingenious art of transfer pricing when it comes to barely legal or illegal ways to make your taxes as small as possible. Imagine a company operating in multiple countries. Now, they could employ a team of experts to manage their finances legally, but where's the fun? Instead, they have a division of financial entities that shuffle money across borders like a game of financial hide-and-seek. One moment, the money is in a tax-friendly country, and the next, it's magically disappeared to another. Poof! Taxes are gone, but the illusion of legality remains. Some tax-savvy billionaires also find refuge in trust funds. Now, these aren't your average piggy banks that parents set up for their kids. We're talking about complex legal structures that resemble mazes built to confuse even the most persistent tax investigator. The ultra-rich can squirrel away money in these funds, ensuring that their wealth remains shielded from the taxman's prying eyes for generations to come. Then there's the art of claiming business expenses that defy all rationality. A billionaire might argue that their lavish vacation to an exotic island was a business trip to seek inspiration for their next venture. The truth is that some wealthy individuals have mastered the art of transforming their personal indulgences into legitimate business deductions, ultimately lowering their taxable income. Who knew that sunbathing and sipping cocktails could be so business savvy? And let's not forget the proverbial loophole surfing. Our beloved billionaires have a knack for diving headfirst into the rabbit holes of tax codes emerging with treasures of deductions that even the most astute tax advisors would miss. It's almost like they have a personal tax code decoder ring that unlocks secret doors to tax savings. Do you feel disgusted by how the rich avoid taxation? Well, what do you expect when you ask for half of their money? One does not become Chinggis Khan rich by giving half of what he earns to someone else. Care to learn more about the richest people in history like Chinggis Khan? Click on the video.